What is good, YouTube? This is the FF Dynasty coming at you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment below with either love or if you're feeling like some hate, throw some shade down there. Either way, it all greatly helps us out so we can keep bringing you new content. What's good? We're coming to you on a on a Thursday. Just saw Marcus Mariota throw a touchdown pass to Darren Waller. This could easily be five years ago. All of a sudden, Darren Waller, before he went off the deep end, I don't, I don't know if any. <laughs> then he came back, and now he's the best. Uh, Marcus Mariota, decent backup. They paid him a lot of money, so Mariota's out there slinging it around. See what happens. His fall from grace took a different path, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It wasn't drugs and alcohol. It was uh, just not being very good. <laughs> just poor play, yeah. Similar to what we're about to talk about tonight. Similar to Yeah. Oh, it, was, it was a very similar situation. Uh, good tie together. So, obviously, Mariota got benched for uh, old Ryan Tannehill. And we're, the topic du jour is uh, little Carson Wentz and Jalen Hurts and the Philadelphia Eagles. So when I first started thinking about this, I, I thought of the, the, great, the great Seinfeld uh, episode where Steinbrenner think, goes to George's parents' house and thinks he's dead. And uh, he leaves a message on – George's dad leaves a message on uh, Jerry's answering machine and felt like if this was the version of this, it would be like – Guys, it's Philly. Jeffrey Laurie's here. Wentz is dead. Hurts is starting. Call me back. <laughs> yeah. He was like, Some, something went wrong because he was putting in so many hours and working so hard. And George's mom was like, are you sure you're talking about my you Georgie? Sure you, got the, you sure you got the right guy? <laughs> Man, that show was really hitting his stride. That was, that was season seven. Yeah, so that was, that was uh, when I, as soon as I – I saw that episode the other day, and I was like, ah, that's that's perfect. I'm going to use that. So we got uh, – let, let's start on the Carson Wentz side of things. Um, it's essentially the question right now, I think, just going around is, is, is Carson Wentz actually dead? And that's just why I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah. Um, so I don't, I don't personally think so. Um, I got a hard time um, seeing the guy from – in Carson Wentz from 2017 to 2019 was putting the whole team on his back had you know everybody likes to talk about the MVP like season he was just finding dirty gritty ways to get it done uh and was everybody everybody loved the guy and now we're in a position where he's basically shell-shocked like he looked just like he's got PTSD out there like there's zero confidence in what's going on with Carson Wentz it's even when he has time, he's sitting there patting the ball. He's not letting it rip. He's not seeing the field at all um, and just just really not playing very well and and not using his legs. As, and I think, you know, that could be part of it. I feel like when you try to, like, neuter a guy and take away part of his game, uh, that, that, that could be and, – and he's been hurt, so it, that could also be in the back of his mind, like, hey. But I, I think the running around was a big part of Carson Wentz. And, and sure – he definitely played a hero ball to a, a decent extent. Uh, and, but I think that can be somewhat coached out of you. I listened to Trent Dilfer talk about it, like when he was around with Favre and all them and how hard they were on Brett Favre. And yeah, Brett Favre never really got rid of it, but you got to coach somebody like that a little harder. And it didn't seem like Doug Peterson was necessarily getting after Carson Wentz. It seemed, seemed like almost more of a coddling of Carson Wentz. And obviously I'm not behind closed doors, but I could just, the optics of what was going on were not good. And when you're not, when you're not trusting it, when you're getting sacked a million times, you know, we uh, saw 50, it with, he's got 50 sacks. He's, he's uh, he takes more sack than a, than a, a fraternity pledge. <laughs> he's got 10 more or than a, the next or, guy. Or a, he's got 10, he's, he's first in the league in sacks. He didn't even play one game. Would it be a fraternity pledge or a sorority pledge? Oh, who's definitely taking more sack? Who's taking def- more sack? The fraternity pledge. Sorostitutes? Sorostitutes can go one frat guy at a time. Fraternity uh, pledges <laughs> got to take the whole squad. <laughs> That's why um, I was never a fr- fr- frat, frat guy. Well, there's a lot of reasons you shouldn't be a frat guy. Not the, not but the, the sack is a big, there. big, it's a biggie. It's towards the top. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so those frat guys have a lot of confidence that they probably shouldn't have. And Carson Wentz has none. So maybe he could borrow a little bit. But Carson um, Wentz, his dad has money, doesn't he? <laughs> 
I'm not sure. I mean, they do live. He is. I don't know if he's from North Dakota or not. I feel like it's. I feel like that's probably either you're really rich or really poor in North Dakota. I don't know if there's much middle ground. Anyway, uh, but. Carson Wentz, again, like I said, no confidence, accuracy, and footwork seem to go hand in hand. They're a mess. Um, even when he has time, it doesn't look great. Um, he has been okay fantasy wise at times through the season here. Uh, but again, like, no, I, I just can't get behind thinking that he's dead. Like, I just, there's, there's been too much good. I can't erase the good stuff that I saw to not have him get another chance. And, and obviously, you got to follow the money and, there's a lot of reasons that the Eagles could, you know, bring him back next year. There's some other options that we'll talk about down the line here. Um, but he, he definitely deserved uh, – we talked about this at one point in the season, and I was like, you definitely can't bench him right now. You got to let him play. And at this point, it was time to bench him. But he needs to sit. Like, you don't need to get your boy. You need to let him get on the bench, watch for a minute, maybe get a little bit of confidence back and be like, hey, man, yeah, I was fucking up. It just then you see the polar opposite when Jalen Hurts gets in the game. Like he's playing with no regard to any. He's not worried about anything. He's just out there just doing whatever he does. Jalen Hurts um, wins. Right, right, yeah. right, right. Um, see, see what I did there? I did see what you did there. So, like I said, I, there's definitely a lot of blame to go around in this situation. It starts with Carson, but I don't think Doug, him and Doug Peterson were on the same page or, or chapter, even rather. Um, I, I definitely didn't like the game that Doug Peterson was calling. Uh, and, you know, then when you see Jalen comes in and what was really grinding my gears is I knew exactly what was going to happen when you did make the switch and you went over there, that, that how the game was going to change. Now, obviously, Jalen's a, a lot more of a uh, runner at this point in his career than Carson is at this point in his career. Um, and they, they got in there and just ran a lot of quicker stuff. Uh, they ran a lot of like over routes, crossers, uh, some screens, getting the ball out to miles in the flat running miles. And, and, you know, I've the week before you're playing green Bay, miles Sanders, like touches the ball, like five times in the first half, like you're struggling offense. Green Bay can't stop the run the fucking football. And it seemed like they were calling a lot of longer developing plays, which isn't what Wentz needed at that point. Like you saw Jalen come in at certain points, they run a speed out seven yards. He cuts out and he throws the ball right away. It just doesn't seem like the game was being called like a lot of longer routes and the receipt, like the receivers also weren't winning when Carson Wentz was out there. Like, it was definitely a, a palpable energy and shift when you got Jalen Hurts in the game. But I was – I knew kind of how this was going to go, that they would get lean on the running game a little more. And when you have a running quarterback like Hurts, it can absolutely help the running game out. And the Eagles' defense has always been there and, and good and reliable. And But when you're getting three and out and three and out and three and out and, and Wentz is looking like dog shit out there, like you, you're going to lose a little uh, – energy and and sizzle if you will as a defense and you know Jalen Hurts came out there and and played a you know a good game the, the offense was actually watchable my wife's an Eagles fan we watch the Eagles every week I've seen every Eagles game bummer every <laughs> it is kind of a bummer I, we usually have three TV set up and whenever the Eagles are playing that she gets one it's a deal of allowing me she likes football too, but kind of allowing <laughs> the, the situation every Sunday to be what it is. She gets we can TV. we can set all these TVs up and spend the day inside if I can watch the <laughs> Eagles game. Yeah, but you know I, I can't hate on what Jalen came in and did. He, he didn't take a sack. I'm not sure he took a negative play. They didn't have a three and out until you know halfway through the third quarter. Um, but man, well, it, it was just like I said. It just it bummed me out that the game plan switched up to to a lot more simple things. Uh, when Jalen was in there, when it seemed like that's really what Carson needed as well. Well, uh, before we get too deep into to Jalen uh, Hurts right now, I want to take it back a little bit to Wentz. He, a couple things you said. Um, you know, you said he's he looks like dog shit out there. I mean, he looks terrible, and I don't mean like his play on the field. Like he's an ugly. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. You can't win with an hideous quarterback. And there's not too many people worse looking than Carson Wentz. Man, attacking um, the personal looks, huh? Yeah, I'm gonna throw some, some photos him, up here for the yeah, for the public. Uh, some people just give him a, a, Prince, a Prince Henry vibe. Yeah, Prince Henry's hideous. Yeah, nah, like if he wasn't a prince, that dude, mm -mm. like no Megan, no Megan. If he's not Prince, <clears throat> mm -mm. 
Mm. Mm. Maybe if he has the same kind of money, I guess. <laughs> um, but you know, it, it just it wasn't working out for him. I mean, Is it he, Henry he, or Harry, which way? Which, Harry, I think. Harry. <laughs> That's, did I say Henry? Um, I mean, Jalen Hurts definitely the better looking quarterback here. I mean, for sure, he's like hundred uh, percent. He's like Will Smith in in Men in Black. You know, he's telling Carson Wentz like, you know, the difference. <laughs> between me and you is I make this look good, you know? Um, but, but Carson's play on the field also it pretty much is the same as his looks uh, on the, in this area. Um, he was, he's second to last in passer rating this season, second to last in completion percentage, first in interceptions, first in sacks. Like I mentioned, he's in the bottom half of the league in yards and touchdowns. Um, you mentioned, how well he played, you know, in 2017. And, you know, I was watching that Brett Coleman video where he was breaking all this down and he, he brought up the fact that they're, you know, they had a much better team around him. And then I'll add mm -hmm. to the fact that he went out that year and then Nick Foles came in and they won a Super Bowl. So how much of that was Carson Wentz being awesome? How much of it is, is was the good team around him? And, and some Nick Foles obviously deserves a ton of credit there, but I don't well, know. Sure. And, but, 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 he definitely seems like a bust. I just said the word everybody wants to say. He's a bust. Is he a bust? He's a bust. No, he's definitely not a bust. He showed you that he's not a bust. Like, he can play. That's what I'm saying. That's why he's, that's why he's not dead to me. Like, he, right. he certainly can play. It's, it's, a conf, it's a mental issue right now. Like, the tools are there. Like, he has all the tools. There is a mental issue going on right now. Now, I don't, Frank Reich was the coordinator at that point, or the QB coach, or I'm pretty sure he was the coordinator because I think that the dude who went down to Jacksonville at one point to be their OC was the – his name is eluding me right now, Felipe. John D. Filippo, I think he might have been mm -hmm. the QB coach. Um, but, man, him and Frank seem to be on the same page. And, and you know, the, a good quarterback needs a good team around him. Like, Joe Burrow was doing a lot with a little this year and was making it look good. And, yeah, certainly, you know, if Patrick Mahomes was in Jacksonville – he probably wouldn't be the same Patrick Mahomes that you think of right now. Like he would still be good, but it would he wouldn't be like, oh my God, look at Patrick. It's, it, there's a system. There's a coach. There's an organization. There's stability. There's all of those things around you. This is an aging Eagles team offensive line right now. And and right now Jalen Hurts fits what they need a little better on offense because he's not worried. Like he's making he's doing what he always did. And the reason that I wasn't a huge fan of him, it's one read and I'm running. Like that's that's what I'm doing, and you know, right. And it worked that game, and and he looked he looked pretty good running it, and he was he was pulling it down pretty decisively. And he doesn't seem like he's super fast, but I mean, he gets the edge, and he gets he's, he's, he gets speed coming up. He's very athletic. Yeah, he he's just not you know he's obviously not twitchy like Lamar, but he's like twice the size of Lamar, and, and he's he's playing smart out there. You know, he 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 had that great drive at the end of the half to get him in field goal range and almost scored but then neil like took like slid to like save some time to kick mm -hmm. the field goal and then elliot doinked that off the mm -hmm. side post i gotta get that sound bite that was a strong thud um yeah and, and and i liked what he was bringing to the press conference and the way you know how he talks to the press and them boys are just trying to bait him like you think you should be the starter you think you should have been the starter all this time do you think you should start next week and he's like i just trying to do the best I can for this team, you know? And, yeah. Well, uh, and that's – those are – that's the best quality of Jalen Hurts. Uh, he's obviously a really good athlete, but the leadership and where he's been, he's a winner. He's been around, uh, you know, ridiculous organization in Alabama and then went to Oklahoma, been around some of the best coaches, uh, was right. a winner in high school, like – and he's a, he can lead on the field. And like I said, when the when he got out there, the, the energy difference was a, a palpable uh, thing out there. Yeah, I mean, and, you can you know, see how it energizes the team. And, and, yeah. and kudos to, to Jalen Hurts. You know, I definitely owe him an There's apology. There's a lot of poise and, 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 and control out there, which is, you know, not – I would say it's uncommon, but it seems like as we've been going on later, longer and longer, these younger guys, when they get out there, they seem like they're a little more comfortable and a little more ready to roll. Well, I mean, it's just so impressive for this guy to come from – Alabama where he got benched at halftime of a national championship game that they were down by 20 in and to and you know the guy who comes in leads them back to victory and to to go from that to to then transferring and being a Heisman candidate and now like getting drafted in the second round much sooner than people thought 
Definitely wasn't a wasted pick like I said I thought it was way back in the offseason when we discussed him in a, a super flex mock. Um, I definitely didn't give him, give him enough credit. Um, a bit, you know, Big Co took him and and uh, or or at least defended the pick. I can't remember. It might have been J Mike that actually took him in that in that mock, and we, it was early too as well. But when we did that mock, but um, I mean, he he obviously can run around and play well, you know. And 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 if you have him, you have this spike in value right now. Now I don't know if this is going to be like a, a Taysom Hill kind of situation where it works for a week or two, and then all of a sudden it's not working as well because well, this guy's going to make one read and take off. Let's just put a spy on him or figure something out, um, which the Saints, you know, have a good defense, and, and they didn't they didn't adjust uh, as well as you think they would and, and give him credit for that fourth down pass. It was a terrible play call. They throw it to Alshon, and he's yeah. going against Marshawn Lattimore on fourth and two, and they make the play. Right. I mean, and it, it wasn't a bad throw, uh, you know, on the – like kind of came back to the front corner of the – pylon there and and you know you could you you could also hope for pass interference on that play the way the ball was thrown and played but it's not like you had randy moss out there against marshawn Lattimore. you had an old uh alshon jeffrey so you know that play goes the other way and people are having shit fits about it especially in philadelphia like the you know the, the worst the, the, criti- the criticisms get heavy quickly they turn on you in a second over there yeah. uh you know it was it was Pennsylvania and now He's dead, and Hertz is in until you know Hertz is messing up. Um, but yeah, let's let's talk a little value on Jalen Hertz, where he is, where you think he's going, and then we'll talk a little Carson Wentz. Um, all right. Like I said, it drained me that all of a sudden now you're getting Miles Sanders involved, and you know, and uh, at one point you had. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm I'm missing a stat here. I had somewhere. With Miles um, Sanders. Yeah, well, he played when they played against Green Bay. Uh, they made a poor effort running the ball. And then you have Hertz come in, and he in that Green Bay game, Sanders had ten touches, ten total touches, and one target. And then this week, he totaled eighteen touches and five targets. Like you got to get your playmaker involved here. When you when the Eagles were garbage last year and couldn't didn't have anybody on the field, and Greg Ward was a quarterback from Houston that nobody knew about, who's playing receiver for them boys. Miles Sanders was the guy. Like they were handing it to him, they were throwing it to him, they were doing everything they could to get Miles Sanders involved. And when Wentz was out there, it just seemed like they were hardly even using Miles Sanders. Then he comes in, and all of a sudden, you know, Hertz comes in, and all of a sudden, Miles Sanders is getting involved. Uh, so right. again, just going back to being a little upset about the way they were using that, but I got to give Hertz definitely his props. Um, absolutely. I thought, like I said, I thought he played good. You're seeing a value spike here. We did talk a little bit about this in a super flex mock. We it was about the three, one position in a super flex where we were deciding whether or not you should take it or not. Big co said, yeah, I was kind of flip flopping around. I said, yeah, I could get down with it, especially if I had Wentz. Um, you were, you said like that it was probably a wasted pick. Um, the thing, like I said, with Jalen hurts is that I didn't like that. I watched a lot of Jalen hurts and, and other people who evaluate quarterbacks, Greg Cosell being one of them, who's a, you know, a legend, like he says the same thing. Like it's one, he's not, he wasn't really ready. Like, and I said at the time, like, I didn't like the pick from the Eagles, but I could understand it because I, I thought he could come in and spot duties and win you games. I don't know if he's the starter over a season, or we'll see over the next couple of games, really. And, I, don't, you know, if, if teams start making adjustments and, and this starts to get harder and it doesn't look as good. Um, but, I, you know, I definitely felt that way. I didn't like the pick, but I could understand the pick. I thought they should have picked somebody else. But right now they're glad they have them. Um, you know, is I think, you know, when you have unique talents like Jalen Hurts has, it can work, but can it last is, I think, the biggest question here. Um, and we t- we've talked about Lamar Jackson a million times on this show. Uh, I think I think Jalen Hurts at this point is probably a better thrower of the football than Lamar Jackson is. But Lamar Jackson is somebody who is just absolutely special in the running phase of the game. And what the Ravens did is not what a lot of organizations will do and completely cater your whole team around this one player who maybe isn't the strongest at throwing the ball. And, and we've seen that in, in the beginning of this season, throughout the season, until, hey, now it's time that we got to try to make a run for the playoffs here. These last two games, been a little different Lamar Jackson out there. 
Uh, and, you know, he's been up and down all, all year, but he certainly has lost value in your super flex draft where he was, you know, probably a first round pick, maybe third or fourth overall in some drafts. And I don't see that happening again. Yeah, he was 100% a first round pick and he might have been the damn second player off the board. Right. Like, and I, I guess I could understand it, but, you know, and I think I, we argued a little bit about Lamar Jackson when he first came out. And then by the second year, I was drafting him because I saw the value of what it was. And I, I think I had it twisted a little bit of saying, you know, I was so caught up in could he actually play the position when that doesn't really matter because he is so special at one thing. Now, it's sort of an outlier or an, an anomaly, if you will, for what Lamar outlier? is doing right now. Outlier? What are those? Um, those are all the good players that Metro has right. miss out on. Uh, but the Ravens which are a so great organization, list. which is part of the reason why I really loved Carson Wentz because it was a good, stable organization with the Eagles, as much as I hate to admit it. And right now it's looking like it's not so great. You know, we're the uh, analytical yeah. guys now with how analytical the Eagles are. How's that? Right. Well, they're not doing well, so right. they, don't, uh, they, don't, they don't want to talk about that. And David Gettleman's looking like he might be turning that around. So, they, you know, he's the anti-analytic guy, and they don't, I haven't heard a lot of whole Gettleman hate. Anyhow. Um, <laughs> Just trying well, to get us over 20 about? minutes here. Uh, Jalen <laughs> Hurts. Jalen Hurts. Sorry. Got derailed here. Um, so. It, it's, a, it's a matter of if you think that. I think in, in with uh, it's not to say that he can't learn how to play the position, read the field, and play the actual quarterback position and not just be a one-read, tuck it, and kind of go guy, right? It can work for fantasy, and that was the part that I was probably getting wrong with Lamar Jackson and being kind of dismissive of. It's like, well, how long can you keep this guy on the field if he can't complete passes? Well, if he can run that well, that, that's part of the game. Now you have to make a decision what you're going to do, what you're going to stop. And you saw it in this last game. Hey, we ran, he ran all over you. And then on fourth and five, he hit you with that Hollywood Brown touchdown and good luck. You know, and, once and all that starts happening. One of the big things that, that I, that both of us had against him that he's looks like he might've changed in these past two games is he's, He's making a concerted effort to get out of bounds and to slide. I haven't. I don't know that I've seen them do that. So them boys are like, "Listen, we got to cut you loose, but get the fuck out of bounds." Yeah, but you did bring. You brought up like when but he's then, feeling it though. Yeah. When he's feeling himself, that goes out the window. Yeah, he's, you can um, tell. You can tell when he's like, you know what, fuck this, going in the out of bounds or sliding shit. I, I could possibly string this all these moves together and score, which I could still get him in trouble. But I mean, just. Just a little bit more sliding and getting out of bounds is definitely going to increase his longevity, which, you know, I don't know if it's going to be 15 years, but does, does that really ma- – you know, uh, quarterbacks yeah, I mean, can have longer careers, but does it really matter when we're trying to win fantasy games, you know? No, and that that's the thing that I think that both of us probably were not yeah. counting for, that we're just worried about this guy being a quarterback and it maybe, you know, the, the combo platter of things, maybe, like I said, unique talents can work, but how long can they last? Lamar's career will probably be shorter. Is the same fate for Jalen Hurts? I don't really know, but it was the reason that I didn't really like him because I didn't think that he was, it's not that I didn't, I like him as a human being. He seems like an awesome dude. He's really yeah. athletic. The Eagles like his deep ball. Like I just, you saw it in that game. Like it's not like he played a great quarterback, like from, stand back there and and make all the throws and make all the reads. He made a couple of decent throws and then ran around like crazy and it caught the Saints off kilter. Like you said, you saw it with Taysom Hill. It was okay. It wasn't great, but it was kind of hiding the the deficiencies that Taysom Hill was having. And now it's slowly starting to look like it's eroding uh, in front of you. Now, eroding beneath me. I think think Jalen Hurts is a much better player than Taysom Hill is. Um, and it's just a matter of if you feel like you should cash in if you drafted Hurts on the value now and try to squeeze a first round pick or something out of it or or not. What? How do you feel about it? I I would buy. I'm down to do that. Are you? And I don't know if you could get a first right now necessarily. And super but flex some, probably, but, some, but well, then that's what we're basically talking about here with quarterbacks and all other right. thing and all other leagues. Like matter? I'm, I'm typically not it's really trading minutes, yeah. for a quarterback unless I'm like really, really ready to go. And clearly the one quarterback position is holding me back. Then I might overpay for a decent quarterback. Uh, but other or than that, draft like, a guy like, you know, one of these guys who could be studs in the second round uh, when, when the studs are gone. I, I, don't, I mean, everybody's enamored with go about it, but Kyler Murray's been crushing it this year. Fantasy wise for the most part, they had the shoulder injury. It's been just okay. But like, 
Jerry is probably still out a little bit on him. He does, he misses three. He's probably the best passer out of all these really oh, mobile sure. quarterbacks. But he still misses all sorts of shit. And when he's off, he's really off. Uh, so, you know. Are you trying to trade J- uh, Jalen Hurts? I think I'm still in the camp of I would probably try to move on from him and squeeze as much value as I can out because I'm just not sure that he'll be the starter Right. forever and and the, right now like i think down the road there could be another opportunity where he gets out there and is able to do his thing i just don't know how many games in a row until jalen hurts is a little bit figured out and maybe i'm completely wrong again and maybe he just is it just keeps learning keeps adapting but we we've in my viewing uh pleasure what i've seen from jalen hurts is not being able to do a lot of the things that a pro level quarterback needs to do and how long can what the Eagles just did kind of be catching teams by surprise. Right. And, you know, rushing for, you know, like I said, the, the Ravens are rushing for a ton of yards there and it works. And if you can get the defense to have to commit to that, it's a lot easier to make Pat. You don't have to make a lot of big tight window passes. It, and, 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 you know, so it, it definitely is workable. Also, again, like I said, not a lot of organizations are willing to do what the Ravens just did. And another thing is, you know, I don't know who's going to be the quarterback in Philadelphia next year. They can't cut Carson Wentz. There's too much money, $59 million dead to cut him next year. That's not going to happen. They possibly could trade him. And maybe someone like the Colts or the Patriots or somebody who might believe in him, you know, there's a there's a imagine thinking if uh, imagine uh, thinking that Carson Wentz and and Zach Ertz are on the Colts next year. Uh, I think yeah. I texted that to you, like, yeah, because I know you hate that imagine thinking thing. Well, uh, there's there's some possibilities for Wentz. I don't think he's dead. There's you know I don't know sixty nine million or sixty five million reasons to think that he probably will be the quarterback for the Eagles starting the season next year. And, you know, they got an offseason to figure this thing out. You were talking about the Colts. Obviously, we talked about some Frank Reich. A lot of people have connected those dots that that's where it could be going. You know, they're paying Rivers $25 million this year, and they, they gave Brissett a $20 million guaranteed contract. So they've got $45 million tied up in quarterbacks, essentially. You know, Brissett's deal was two years, but that's, you know, you're paying $45 million in quarterbacks. So, you, you know, you basically be paying Carson around $35 million. So it's – there is – like that works for the Colts. They're ready to go. Frank and, and Wentz reportedly had a fantastic relationship and it absolutely devastated him when Reich left. Um, they were like going to church they, together and stuff. Well, I don't know if they were going to church together, but they do, they, they do share uh, the same sentiments. A passion I for the that. Christ. Um, yeah. Um, but so that, that's an easy dot to connect, but it's also easy to say the Eagles paid you a whole lot of money. Doug Peterson, figure this thing out. And hey, is Peterson an back? I would think so, just because he brought a championship to Philly. So I think you get some more grace period. I'm not a huge fan a slot, of like, like hey, one season extra of may, grace maybe. period. Maybe, and, and like, I'm usually not a fire that fire this guy, but like I didn't, I didn't enjoy what Doug Peterson was doing with Carson. It didn't seem like, like I said, it's I like don't know him what's and Matt going and Aggie on. got together and was like, let's see how bad we can fuck up our teams. Right, and then we had we had success at one point, and now all of a sudden it seems like it's it's just like Carson and. Peterson seemed like when you put two magnets together and they're just pushing themselves on the wrong apart. way. Yeah. The, 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 the. <laughs> so man, I, I, I'm still interested in Superflex and, and getting Carson and Wentz. Wentz. Like I ended up, we ended up with Carson Wentz in some spots and I liked car. Usually my strategy in Superflex is draft a rock, a rock solid quarterback and then try to get the last good one. And Carson Wentz, a lot of the times, was the last good one in this year's Superflex. And I, and Zach, <laughs> maybe the joke was on me there, uh, but tending to be usually the last good one hanging around. Um, so he was a guy that I was interested in in a lot of Superflex drafts this year. Um, and I'm not a Wentz stan by any means, but uh, I did think that there was a lot of upside there. And I thought the Eagles were a st- stable organization, so it was, you know, a fairly good pick as my as my QB two week in week out and some weeks you know every quarterback even Mahomes has some weeks that aren't Mahomesian uh, so you know I really only need if you could get me to eighteen that's what I'm hoping for um, twenty so it di- it didn't work out but I, I would still I'd be aggressively pursuing Carson Wentz if I was me which I am. Uh, <laughs> 
I was going to say if I were you, but I don't give a shit about you. Um, <laughs> if I were me, <laughs> Jay Wayne's going to pursue some Carson Wentz. You know, two twos would be where I'd start, and I don't necessarily mean it just saying, you know, just send two second-round picks, like valued guys around those areas, a second-round a second round pick and some valued guys around that area. I'd be trying to do everything I could to not give guys that were valued at a first-round or a first-round pickup to pick up Carson Wentz is essentially kind of where I stand on that. Because like I said, man, there's too much good. I've seen too much good out of him to be like, nah, he's dead. He's not going to start anymore. Even if he's not elite. He's a bust. Which if, if you're not elite, you're a bust. So He's a bust. I think he's very serviceable. Like I think if, if somehow, some way, the Niners ended up with Carson Wentz, he would be fucking awesome. I don't know how that would happen. They're a little cap strapped and... The Eagles owe him a lot of money, so we we shall see. But anyway, you got anything else to add? Mm-mm. <laughs> All right, well, we went way too long, and uh, but wanted to talk a little bit about – and I hope it didn't come off as, as hating on Jalen Hurts because I, I, I do like the guy. I just – No, I mean, I think we, we – we, I apologize. We talked <laughs> about uh, – how, how, but we did – we were, like, selling, though. Yeah, I mean, I mean, again, I could be wrong, but I mean, this is what we're doing. We're talking he's not about. This, we're, I don't feel like I'm making oh. the same mistake I did with Lamar Jackson because he's not the same type player. But if he's better thrower, then maybe he can give up some of the ridiculous running. But I don't know. I. It's not like it's Joe Flacco that he's taking over for, you know. Yeah. So. I don't know yeah. that he's going to be a, the starting quarterback next year. So that's that's more of like why I might be trying to sell if I could get good value. Like, would you sell Jalen Hurts for Carson Wentz? That's an interesting question. I probably would. Would you have to? I think you could get more. Get more than Carson Wentz for Jalen Hurts? I, th- I would try if that's, yeah. what, if that's the route you were going. Okay. You Do we have a title for this video yet? Uh, I do not hit so. us in the comment section. <laughs> we're going to figure something out and we're going to go with it and then we'll see how it works. Uh, what, what, let us know what you think it should be. I, I, I like Jalen hurts Wentz, but it's not as explanatory as it necessarily needs to be. Um, Carson Wentz is a bust that does, that takes away too much from Jalen, Jalen hurts. Uh, Jalen hurts greater than Carson Wentz. Titles are always the toughest thing because YouTube, you guys care about the title a lot. Yeah, yeah, toughy, toughy. You got to, you got to, almost got to start there, but it didn't work out this time. So, appreciate you guys checking us out. We'll see you next time. Holler, peace.